Hi, I'm Kevin Flanagan, Head of Fixed Income Strategy at Wisdom Tree. And I'm Jeff Weniger, Head of Equity Strategy. And this is Minds on the Markets, where we go behind the scenes and beyond the trends to explore the forces impacting our markets. Thank you everyone for uh, coming in today and liking and subscribing and doing all of the great stuff that you do on YouTube when it comes to Wisdom Tree's content. I'm here with my colleague on the fixed income side, Kevin Flanagan. And Kevin, you've been writing and talking and doing research on what I think is a very critical topic, which is we're all talking about Fed rate cuts, but hey, nobody really gives or most people don't really give a lot of credence to the question of QT, the pace of quantitative tightening, how how much that will unwind, when that will unwind, the time frame for it. It's just as important as interest rates. So give us the lowdown. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you underscored that point, Jeff, because you're absolutely right. It's always rates, 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 and, and, and obvious, right? I mean, that's that's certainly going to be the headlines what people want to read about. But, you know, we can't forget their balance sheet. And, and I don't want to get too deep into Fed 101 here. But when we talk about the Fed's balance sheet, we're talking about what's known as their system open market account, their holdings of treasuries, agency mortgage-backed securities, and a little bit of agency securities in there as well. So the acronym is SOMA. That is what we're actually talking about here. And what's interesting is that the Fed now appears to be ready to embark on a rate cut cycle, but at the same time, QT is still going on. Now, we were never a proponent that they couldn't do one without the other. OK, but at some point they're going to need to bring the two together. You can't continue to pare down your balance sheet and drop the Fed funds rate. So it'll be interesting to see where we're at because QT did get paired back in June, but there's still an awful, awful lot of work to do. Let me just give you a couple of numbers just to prove my point. So they got up um, post COVID, right? The COVID related QE that we yeah. saw got up to about eight and a half trillion. So they've sliced that over the last couple of years by about $1.8 trillion. Do the math. You still have 6.7 on their balance sheet. So there's a long, long way to go for the Fed here. Mm-hmm. And at what speed is that basically coming off? Because that's one of the things, it's kind of like a faucet where you have, you have to, granted, one side of the faucet is hot and the other is cold. But if I just turn one on and turn one off, the water flow never actually changes the speed and the cadence. So, I mean, it, it's, we're all talking as a, as a street consensus about upwards of a hundred cuts, a hundred basis points worth of cuts by the December meeting. But where's the guidance? What are we hearing from them? What's next on this, basically this agenda? Yeah, you're really not hearing anything. As yeah. uh, a matter of fact, you know, you had uh, New York Fed President Williams speak the other day and he was asked about the balance sheet and, pretty much said, nah, you know, we haven't talked about it for a while, but, but we are going to be talking about it. That's for sure. I think as the months go ahead, but going back to what you were saying in terms of the pace, so they're rolling off about 60 billion per month. Okay. So everyone get out your iPhone calculator, 6.7 trillion, and they're rolling off 60 billion per month. That's a long, long time before we get any kind of headway. And also, the Fed wants to try to have more of a treasuries centric mm-hmm. balance sheet. So to eliminate the mortgage backed securities part. Well, guess what? That's two point three trillion that the Fed's holding. So once again, a lot of wood to chop for the Fed and they're not going to get there. You know, can they get down to even where we were before COVID? Probably not. We're still three trillion dollars above that level. So what I would say when we're always talking about Fed meetings, when it's a rate hike, or in this case, a rate cut, is it a live meeting? And I think <clears throat> live meeting in this poor tense is going to be not just what they're going to do in terms of cutting rates, but what about when is that announcement going to come for their balance sheet that QT is going to come to an end? That's also, I think, up for observation for the rest of this year. But if you were to ask me straight up, is QT going to officially end in 2024? I would say no. I would say that's probably going to be something in early 2025. You can get the announcement maybe in December, but I think they're going to continue to pare down the balance sheet as they implement three rate cuts this year. 
this is what to be looking for. I, I don't, they're not giving any guidance on it. It's fascinating. You seem to be one of the few that's really talking about it and emphasizing it. My colleague, Kevin Flanagan here at Wisdom Tree, make sure that you are liking and subscribing this, I don't know, Kevin, somewhat new um, YouTube agenda that we have here at Wisdom Tree. We're talking in these little four, five, six minute clips about macro concepts like this every couple of weeks. And then also you can find the written version of various concepts along these lines from me and Kevin over there on the Wisdom Tree website. It's called Minds on the Markets. For that, thank you, Kevin Flanagan. I'm Jeff Weininger. That'll do the call.